<sighs> well, good morning. Uh, at least it's morning for me. I'm waiting um, for client notes. So I take this time to talk about my setup here. It's time. My last video about my setup is a bit older. Uh, I had different monitor setup and I get quite a few questions about my monitor setup here and why I use four monitors. And if you count the iPad five and maybe in the end, I will talk about how I might change this thing for the new MacBook Pro. We will see. So since I don't have too much time, I take this camera quick and dirty and show you around and talk about all the essentials. And I have links below with all this stuff or the key features, so to speak, of my setup. So let's talk about the main screens here. Two LG ultrawides, 34 inches and not curved. If you get curves like previous here, will not be straight, at least in my opinion. So don't get curved displays. Also, they are a bit tricky to mount anyways. So those are mounted to a two screen swivel arm that is mounted to the desk. So this one is mounted in a little angle, especially with a mixer. It's a bit nicer to look at. Um, this is connected to HDMI on the Mac Mini 2018 machine, still running this. <laughs> still works with an eGPU. Um, this one screen is the main screen, so to speak, and is connected to the eGPU as well and usually has the main window and all the stuff on there that is important. My third screen is this one. This is still a 27-inch BenQ monitor. Uh, pretty nice. Um, and I use it for video preview and the color reproduction is pretty good at least for sRGB web delivery, this thing rocks. And then I have a fourth screen is a 24 inch Dell in vertical mode. Uh, usually client notes are there or the mixer or anything that is uh, not really important and gets in the way of the main application ends up on there. And if you count this one, <laughs> this is the iPad right there. Usually running mail or anything else that I don't want to have running on the main machine to save RAM or processing power. But recently I switched to analyze mode, so to speak. A plugin, Yulin Loudness Meter, which is actually a plugin that you can run on your DAW as a native plugin inside the application now has an iOS or iPadOS app. Really nice. And it kind of gets the data via a plugin on your machine that sends the audio information over your network to the iPad or even an iPhone. And you get a loudness meter, frequency analyzer and stuff like that. And you have presets you can have presets for Spotify, YouTube, whatever. And I have it set up via sound source. So basically my output of the Mac Mini gets sent via this plugin to the iPad. And so no matter what I use, if it's Final Cut, Logic, even YouTube in the browser, whatever, uh, Spotify, all apps, I can have the analyzer running pretty much all the time, like now. All right, so this is my main setup for Final Cut 10. Timeline usually is here, the main window over there, but sometimes I have different workspaces. Uh, like this is mostly used for the first selection. So I have everything on my fingertips. And then I also have a workspace for finalizing. Preview window and a big timeline for sound and uh, getting the edit done. So this is really nice. And for logic, same thing basically. Um, I have the main edit window here 
and then I have a mixer here, plugins, video preview sometimes goes over there as well on this screen, but sometimes it's nice to have it a little bit smaller right where the mixer is. And also the what I have on the iPad is the Logic Remote. So I have uh, this running as well right there yeah so basically uh, this is all happening with the eGPU I have an RX 5500 with 8 gigs of RAM in there and it works pretty much pretty good so I tested this setup with the M1 Mac Mini and I have a video about that linked here um, and it didn't work out well so I'm still running the 2018 Mac Mini with the eGPU um, and yeah we will see if I have this setup going with the new MacBook Pros we will see anyways back to the setup here in terms of keyboard I have the Logitech MX Mac keyboard pretty nice really nice I like the backlit keys and I'm quite happy with it it's a good solid keyboard with backlit keys so this is good so in terms of mice i'm using the logitech mx master 3 pretty solid ergonomics are great i like all the button layouts and how it feels and how it works battery life is awesome and i really like this horizontal score over here especially for timelines and stuff like that this is pretty nice but even better, I switched to the Magic Trackpad at some point, maybe one and a half years ago. At first it was a bit odd, but now I can't live without it. Uh, pretty nice and smooth uh, getting around, especially in Final Cut, zooming in out, zooming, pinch, zooming, whatever. So scrolling, navigating, um, pretty good. Um, I mean, I could especially here as uh, this scrolling is yeah much nicer um, and if you get used to it it's pretty nice clicking uh, yeah overall pretty good so another one another addition to my desk here is the loop deck plus mostly for color grading in final cut um, it's pretty solid because you can select a clip and then you have control basically over midtone shadows and highlights all at once at the same time. So it's pretty nice to uh, push the midtones and crush the shadows and work the highlights and really get a quick color grade done with that. Also temperature, saturation, all that. And with version 2.6 it works out so that you only have to select a clip and as soon as you put in your fingers or your comments it opens up automatically the color reels uh, so you don't have to click and stuff uh, yeah it's pretty nice also i copy and paste with those shortcuts here the settings from one to another clip or another clips so you could use more reels and buttons here, but mainly I use it to get the color crate done quite quickly and efficiently. Really nice. I can't really live without that. So last but not least, this thing is still rocking my desk. This is the Contour Shuffle Pro version 2. And it's really essential and final cut to get a nice precise selection going. In out is here. I have selected here or set up the ripple delete and and beginning of a clip uh, shortcuts zoom in zoom out for the timeline here so I'm quickly going here or if I go to uh, select an edit point and ripple delete the beginning and the end I tried the loop tag CT, which basically also has a, a shuffle reel thingy going on and shortcuts, but um, didn't work out too well. The uh, shock wheel was not 
precise enough and yeah overall this thing is worth the money so well, let's talk about audio real quick i'm using the audience id14 audio interface it's pretty simple but pretty good it has two inputs you could connect the microphone if you want but in this case i have the ipad connected actually and could play back and podcast while editing or anything else in here but it actually is just a fancy pretty basic but solid monitor controller for me so this big knob here is digital so it controls the software um, you have hotkeys you can mute or mono your track you mute while uh, clicking on this reel you have your headphone amp which is also nice and solid and um, basically it controls the software here I turn the knob here and it controls this thing here the software mixer and it's also nice I always have the same levels a basic information here I really like this thing yeah so this thing is pretty nice it's not too expensive but has good internals a nice chip to work your AD and DA it's pretty good and it drives nicely my new addition to the studio the new biodynamic DT900 Pro X open back headphones pretty good for mixing but also listening to music and watching movies I will have a video about those at some point in the next few months I really want to use them and compare them to other headphones but those are pretty pretty good but mostly I'm using my KRKs here uh, they're pretty nice and solid I mean I could switch or update to the Kelly Audio N5 at some point I think but so far so good I'm quite happy with those KRKs uh, for this room size they're pretty amazing anyway so that's basically it this is my whole setup a 2018 Mac Mini still with an eGPU uh, runs all this for the kind of work I do it's pretty good I might switch to the new MacBook Pros at some point um, still have to figure out <laughs> how to connect everything basically it's all connected to this call digit back here and I also have an OWC Thunderbolt 4 hub uh, behind the monitor where I have my SSDs connected or some connected um, the rate is connected to the call digit and I have also a USB-C uh, hub behind there where I have also more SSDs a rate is connected via USB 4 or USB 3.1 mark 2 or whatever so um, all that but I basically have all ports populated on my Mac mini all right there you have it this is basically the essential setup uh, all the basic stuff um, I might switch things up uh, one the new MacBook Pro came out and I tested the M1 Mac mini I have a video here or there or there hmm and yeah it didn't work out because of this monitor setup I really want at least three monitors going and with the M1 Mac mini that didn't work out well performance was not as good as I hoped for and at least for video editing it was actually quite a bit slower or at least not faster than the current 2018 Mac mini with an GPU we will see anyways that's about it uh, if you have any questions about that let me know in the comments and uh, two videos i will make in the next few days weeks it's about talking about the biodynamic headphones and about the xml workflow from final cut to logic and back we will see if that update changed anything because the video i made for that is quite old since you can see it's the old Final Cut interface in that video anyway so that's it so links below they are affiliate links so if you buy clicking on them I will get a little kickback but you will not pay anything more 
So that is appreciated. Anyway, that's it. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Good Nacht. Wiedersehen. Tschüss. Goodbye. Uh, fresh coffee now and uh, see if kind notes arrived. Bye.